All right, so uh, another question we had from 717 has to do with the pattern of salvation and baptism. Uh, we see in the scriptures, there's many examples of individuals at the moment of salvation, they immediately get baptized. Uh, case in point would be the first mass baptism at the day of Pentecost, where 3,000 people come to faith in Christ and are immediately baptized. And as you work through the book of Acts and the pattern of the early church, it seems like that's more normative. You, you have the example of the Ethiopian eunuch who is traveling. Now, in that case, there's a bit of uh, need of just the moment because Steve, uh, Philip's going to go away and the Ethiopian eunuch will be left completely alone, headed back to Ethiopia. So he has to get baptized right then. There's not another option. Same thing with the Philippian jailer. Paul is, uh, you know, he's in jail. He gets released from jail. The jailer's going to take his own life. Paul stops him. And the jailer says, what must I do to be saved? He gets uh, saved and then immediately gets baptized. And the, it seems like the urgency in all of these points is that... Um, we have in the case of Pentecost, and we have in the case of the Ethiopian eunuch and the Philippian jailer, is that Paul, all of them are going to be used immediately to have an influential role in the church and are traveling elsewhere. In the case of the day of Pentecost, 3,000 people from all over the world are going back home. And in the case of the Ethiopian eunuch, he's going to go away. In the case of the Philippian jailer, we have the opposite issue. He's going to stay there, but Paul is leaving. So they have to baptize him then. We don't, have any, we don't have any baptized believers in Philippi that can actually do this. So the reason for the immediacy of the New Testament pattern there, at least at some level, seems to be just a pragmatic issue. Uh, they need to be baptized immediately because some of them, this is their only chance to get baptized in that regard. Um, so when we have descriptions like that, sometimes we read them and go, well, okay, this is the normal pattern. The moment you get baptized, I mean, the moment you believe, you should immediately get baptized. Uh, but the problem with that is that the book of Acts is a descriptive uh, statement, not a prescriptive statement. In other words, it doesn't tell us exactly how we should do things. It just tells us this is the way things were done. So it's not, it's not exactly the same to say, well, in Acts, they baptized the day they got saved, so we should do the same thing. Uh, within the early church, uh, we, we find that baptism is important. And so the, the right pattern for baptism, from my perspective, is that someone has come to saving faith in Christ Jesus... And then have uh, not only a knowledge of that saving faith, they're able to articulate why they would want to get baptized. And then are baptized uh, in a point where that baptism really would have meaning to them. And so a, a classic example of this is you have a nine-year-old child who uh, really confesses faith in Christ Jesus. And then as you're talking with them, you want to make sure that they really understand not just saving faith now, but also the purpose and point of baptism is baptism itself uh, because what i don't want to have happen is someone gets baptized and then they later on go uh, what was that what did i do why did i do that i don't remember any of this and so we always have people write their own testimony we always read their testimony before we baptize them we always meet with them to discuss to make sure they understand it and so in the case of the early church especially at the day of pentecost you have jewish followers of judaism who are faithful and devout and have a, a very mature understanding of theology at this point. They knew about Christ. They knew about the crucifixion and resurrection claims. Uh, and so they are not, uh, they're not like a nine-year-old child who's coming into their uh, understanding of these things. That's a little different matter. Uh, but even with that, I think the goal of baptism for the church is to encourage people to get baptized as soon as as they are ready to get baptized. So I would not delay if someone says, well, I'm ready to get baptized, but it's just a hassle. I don't want to do it. I, that's not a good excuse. If we say, hey, I want to get baptized, but I'd like to do it on my birthday because it's such a significant thing to signify my new birth in Christ and to do it by getting baptized on the day I was born physically. That kind of thing is great. And there's a reason to delay because it adds significance then to the baptism itself. We've had people baptized on Good Friday. We've had people baptized on Christmas Eve because of the significance of it. Anything that helps someone remember the purposes and reasons for it, I think, is encouraging. So what we want in this standard is there's not a monolithic approach to it. There's no rule. The better thing is to say, what is the best way to maximize the proclamation of that person's faith to the church and the world at large and to maximize the joy and ongoing remembrance of it? Uh, of the event itself of being baptized. That's what we want to maximize. 
And we don't want to uh, uh, encourage delay just for convenience sake or because someone's embarrassed or something like that. We'd say, no, no, faith in Christ calls us to obedience of getting baptized. So assuming those first two criteria are met, I would encourage someone to get baptized as soon as practically possible. All right, good question.